Welcome. Previous videos have outlined how to search within print secondary sources and given you a basic introduction to searching secondary sources online. This lesson will focus exclusively on effective online searching. So here's a basic outline of what this lesson will cover. We'll talk a little bit about the differences between using secondary sources online and in print, and then some things to be wary of online, in particular cost. The bulk of this lesson is devoted to using terms and connectors to search online. Although we will be focusing on searching secondary sources, terms and connector searching can be used in any of the commercial platforms in any of the databases. For that reason, we are introducing it earlier in this class rather than later. More and more, our access to secondary sources exists through commercial providers like LexisNexis, Westlaw, and Bloomberg. So it's important to understand the advantages and disadvantages of using secondary sources online. While it's certainly true that commercial providers offer access to many secondary sources that the libraries no longer carry in print, one must remember that the documents retrieved from online secondary sources are among the most expensive available. I'll show you an example of the cost involved in just a second. But before I do, two quick further points on using secondary sources online. First, when using secondary sources online, remember to take advantage of the finding tools we discussed for print secondary sources like keyword indexes and tables of contents. Many online secondary sources do not have keyword indexes, but all have some form of table of contents. Second, be aware that treatises are available in either Lexis or Westlaw, but not in both. If you are trying to search a specific treatise online, you will have to know who the publisher or provider is to access it. Again, this is one of the reasons why the library catalog can be so valuable. It lists all the treatises and points you to all the places where they are available. Here are the costs associated with viewing and retrieving secondary sources from Westlaw. Take these numbers with a grain of salt. These are the retail costs. If you worked for a firm that had a subscription, these costs could be substantially lower. However, because researchers tend not to use secondary sources as much as primary sources, for better or worse, many firms choose to exclude secondary sources from their Lexis and Westlaw subscriptions. So, they end up paying retail prices for these after all. And here are the corresponding charges on Lexis Advance. These charges are 2015 numbers. They are merely representative. As you can see, if you're not careful and start clicking on articles or sections from a treatise without purpose while you're working in a firm, you can run up a real large bill in a hurry. Okay, so let's shift gears and talk about searching secondary sources online using terms and connectors. Sections 1-6 and 3-4 of your text provide a pretty good overview of the different ways to search online and some of the advanced techniques you might use. The purpose of this brief demonstration is to give you a repeatable technique for applying all the connectors and operators to your issue to develop an appropriate terms and connectors search. So here's the basic drill. First, it's important to understand that terms and connectors searching will not work until you can clearly state your issue in a sentence using legal terminology. For example, an issue statement regarding social host liability might be stated as follows. Next, it's important to select the key terms from your issue statement to be searched. For most issues, three to five key terms will work well here. So, for example, I might choose host, injury, intoxicated guest, or host liable, intoxicated guest. There's no one right answer here. The third step is to expand your search to account for all possible synonyms or alternatives for your key terms. As noted before, one of the functions of using indexes and secondary sources is that they lead you to alternative terms like undue influence or bribery. This is especially important in subject areas you are not familiar with. The more familiar you are with an area of law, the easier it will become to recognize alternative terms. For now, and for the sake of brevity, let's just consider a few. A host could just as easily be a hostess. A guest could be intoxicated or drunk or under the influence of alcohol. I think we can agree on all these. So one way to look at the search is... Next, we'll consider alternatives to the same terms using root expanders like an exclamation point or a question mark, depending on the service, and universal characters like an asterisk to pick up variations on the same term. As an example, the term host followed by an exclamation point on Westlaw would retrieve both host and hostess because the exclamation point indicates that the user is looking for the word host and any word that has the word host as its root, like hosting or hostess. Note that the host exclamation point would also pick up hostile, H-O-S-T-I-L-E, so you have to be careful when you use root expanders. Similarly, drunk exclamation point would pick up drunk, drunkard, and drunken. 
So if these are all possible alternatives, then the root drunk would be an effective way to expand that term. So having reviewed our terms and considered alternatives, our search now looks like what you see. Finally, for our purposes, we would link our terms together using the connectors provided by whichever online service provider we are using, Lexis, Westlaw, or Bloomberg. The key to this phase is to think in your head about what an ideal answer would look like and where the words would appear in relationship to each other, within a few words, within a sentence, within a paragraph, or even further apart. Then the key is to use the connectors to express that relationship. So for example, my search might end up looking something like this. The good news is that commercial providers don't start charging you until you start clicking on documents. So if you run a search and retrieve too few or too many results, you can always change your connectors to broaden or narrow your search. For now, this is a pretty basic search, but it's a starting point. We won't go on to the next step, which is to use fields or segments to restrict where in a document or what date range we execute our search in. We'll save that for later. For now, two last tips on terms and connector searching. First, if you mean something as a phrase like, quote, false imprisonment, unquote, put the words in quotation marks. Any search engine will recognize words in quotation marks as a phrase. Without the quotation marks, different search engines will treat the space between the words differently. Second, if you're using alternative terms, it's always a good idea to wrap them in parentheses. The reason has to do with the order of operators, which is, again, beyond the scope of this lesson. If you look at the example above, you'll see that I wrapped parens around the terms intoxicated or drunk exclamation point or alcohol. I did so because I wanted the search engine to look for the words in the same paragraph as any of those. So that's it for this session. In the next video, we'll talk about searching for law review articles using LegalTrack and Hein Online, two librarian favorites.